Right, good morning. It's uh, day three on our project garden. I've uh, got quite a bit to get in today. Um, we're going to be replacing all the fence panels and I'll go and show you how to take those out and put those back in a little bit later. We're going to be creating the swing area on the left hand side. We're also going to be uh, levelling up and grading the surface across the whole area so that we can actually lay turf, possibly later today, probably start tomorrow. And uh, we're also going to be laying out where the stepping stones are going to go. I'll show you a trick how to make that a little bit easier when you're laying new turf. Right, okay. Uh, when we started this morning, we took all the fence posts out. Sorry, took all the fence panels out. And as we did, two of the posts broke off, which is these ones lying down here. So I've already been out to buy a couple of new ones. Um, I'll be showing you in a little while how to actually put those in with some instant postcrete. But when you put uh, new posts in the ground, they're already treated, but it's always worthwhile giving them an extra treatment. They'll give them a few more years' life once they're in the ground. I tend to do the first three feet, two and a half, three feet, and any timber preservative will do. Give it a good mix. And then when you put it on, lay it on nice and thick. Doesn't matter if you've got drips on there, it's going to be in the ground anyway. Also over here, we've got the boards that we're going to be using for the surrounds of the swing seat area. So the whole of those along the whole length, all around the sides, and particularly the ends, will all get a treatment as well because these are going to be sunk about four inches into the ground. One inch will be above so that when we put the bark chippings on top of the matting, they won't fly all over the grass everywhere once we're done. All right. Okay, we're going to be putting the uh, fence panels in now. Tools, well, materials we need for this. New fence panel. Pocket full of nails. And two brackets for each end of the fence panel. Now, generally, you want to set each of the brackets about a foot from the top or the bottom. Actually, can you zoom in up here? Yep. To the top of the post over here. Yeah. Yes, is it? Yeah. Now, the actual marking they've got on the post here is where the old fence panel was. It's not quite in the centre. So, what I'm doing with these is to make sure it is back in the centre when we put the new panel in. Once the first nail's in, just adjust the bracket so it's straight. I'll get the other one done. Now, one thing to be wary of, this garden's on a slope, constantly goes up. You can't put the brackets at the same height on both sides. What tends to happen is, it'll be lower on the uphill slope, and as the panel comes level, it tends to be higher up here. So if you have them at the same height, what can end up happening is, you can end up with a bracket not actually touching the fence panel at all. That's why a foot top and bottom should be enough on a gentle slope like this to make sure that the panel gets attached properly. As you can see at the back here there's a concrete spur. It was put in a few years ago. So this one's quite an old post but that's holding it in place quite well. <coughs> now normally, you can have a look at the top. Normally what we do now is take the fence panel and just drop it in through the brackets and then nail it into place. But because we've got post caps we can't do that so the cheat is flatten out the front of the bracket so that we can actually place the panel in and you only need to do one side we can place that side in and then push this one in now we know because 
when these were put in, they're not put in straight. This one's going to need a little bit of help. So we've got an overlap at the top, about a centimetre, but at the bottom there's an underlap of a centimetre. So what we're going to need to do is, while Andy holds this, I'm going to pull this post over and then we should be able to get it in. Right, we've got it over the bracket, so now with a wooden mallet we should be able to get it in place. Right, and using the crowbar to try and hold the bracket back, you want to that. Right. right. Use this to lever it and lift it. Because under there, it happens to be a big lump of concrete. Which I'm now clear of. Joy. Right. Okay, you come back over here. You can elbow in place. Oh, no, beautiful. Right, now we've got the panel in place. Just need to knock these back in. With spirit level to check that it is absolutely level. First time for everything. Now you do need to get the nails done on the other side of the bracket to make sure there's no movement. Top ones you can lean over for, but if you need to go around to your neighbours, make sure you get permission first. Don't just drapes through. Last now. <sighs> Done. Right, now this is the left hand boundary and this is supposedly the dodgy side of the fence panel. Because it's uh, the left hand boundary, generally the rule is that this is your fence or your boundary line and therefore it's your responsibility but also you tend to get the dodgy side of the panel I quite like this side the other side just has a single bar but you always get the bad side because the right hand side you get the better side when it comes to featherboard panels you get a better look that way <coughs> but like this we're done but always make sure that when you're going to change your fence you check with your neighbours first just in case they've got animals that can get out okay there we go Right, end of day three, it's been another hot one. Now, unfortunately this morning, when uh, we were going through, we found that uh, a couple of the fence posts had died and fell off. Um, and because of that, having to go off, get the materials for those, because it wasn't something we'd allowed for, uh, we lost about an hour and a half to two hours in actually getting those, plus another hour and a half to actually get them in. So with that and all the old posts being slightly skewed, uh, and trying to get the new fence panels in, that's taken up a lot of the day, so we had hoped that we'd have had three, maybe four hours of actually preparing the soil to actually start laying the turf tomorrow. But unfortunately we've got none done, so tomorrow's going to be quite a long day. Um, hopefully we'll have all of the soil prepared by lunchtime-ish, and then we can start laying the turf after that. So tomorrow lessons will be how to prepare the soil and uh, the four or five stages that go into that. So we'll see you in the morning.